Hello YouTubers, I'm Richard B and welcome to AstroTube, the home of all things astronomy related. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of these. So if you're interested in what this is, stick around and we'll dive right in. Welcome back. Um, before we take a look at the focuser that I held up there, um, let me tell you a little bit uh, about the reason I bought that focuser and why I'm doing the review. So basically in about two weeks time I've got a Skywatcher Quattro arriving hopefully and I'm looking for a direct replacement for the stock focuser. As all of you will probably know, mass-produced Chinese scopes, they're not the best mechanical quality, including the focuser, and they tend to have a lot of flex in them, and they're just not the best quality at all. That's fine for visual, but if you want to do imaging, then you really need to replace it. So I've looked at a few different focuses, and I chose this. The Lacerta 508N Octo Plus 2. Quite a mouthful I know. Um, the reason I chose this focus and we'll come back to this in a second is as I mentioned before I wanted a direct replacement. The focus that comes with the base plate which is a direct match for the drill holes on your Skywatcher scopes so it means you don't have to drill uh, any holes like other uh, focuses such as the Beta uh, steel tracks. Um, for me I'm too much of a coward I just really didn't want to do that so it's a case of take the old one off, put this in its place, and away you go. Now, why did I particularly choose this model? Um, well, basically I wanted something that was gonna be well-engineered, good quality, um, and I looked around. Now, as a comparison, I do own an old Moonlight CR1, um, and I also have a feather touch on my 8-inch RC. So I'll get into that later and give you my thoughts versus this focuser thus far from the unboxing. Um, so the first thing I want to quickly uh, talk about on this focuser is, if I just hold it a bit closer to the camera there, you'll notice if I spin it around, these steel reinforcing bars in the draw tube. There are four of them in there. And what that's for is to allow smooth running of these bearings. Now there's eight of those bearings, um, four on the front and four on the back, which you can't really see very well on the back, it's kind of hidden in there. Um, and why, is, why I'm so impressed with this is in the, the fact that it's got these four uh, runners on the draw tube is it's to keep your draw tube absolutely rock steady and centered uh, with no flex or as minimal flex as possible. Now, one of the other things that helps reduce the flex is if you look at the uh, actual travel on there, there is around about 20 mils of travel on the draw tube itself. Now, I know that doesn't sound a lot because uh, you have others like the Bailers which have 35 and I think the Moonlight can have up to 50. But if you're imaging, you want this as small as possible. Uh, the reason for that is the shorter the draw tube travel, the, God, try saying that quickly. Shorter the draw tube travel, um, basically the sturdier and more solid your draw tube will be. Now, the standout features that I also like about this is you'll notice on the top, um, you've got what looks like a captain's wheel, um, and there's not normal thumb screws. And the reason for that is it comes with its own built-in center locking adapter. So obviously that screws down, loosens up, screws down to lock your and center your eyepiece or camera in place. Now keep this in mind because obviously most of the focuses you have to buy that is kind of an add-on component. So obviously factor in additional costs there. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I've got a feather touch in the CR1, which I can compare this with in terms of uh, how smooth it is. And I have to say, I would go as far, and I'm sure there'll be lots of people shooting down on this, saying it can't be possible, but 
I would go as far to say that this actually feels smoother than my feather touch. I know that sounds a lot to believe, but I can tell you from my honest experience. Um, now in terms of fitting um, this T-scope, I am going to do another video about that, but the adapter literally fits on the bottom like that. There's the four screws there and it bolts on. Now, if we look at the adapter itself, it's got notches in two places, so 90 degrees from each other. So what that means is you can actually position your um, focus in four different orientations because obviously you've got two orientation there, but if you flip it over that way, you've also got two orientations there. And so it gives a lot of flexibility. Um, weight wise, the focuser is 995 grams. So it's quite a hefty beast. Um, build quality, there are no rough edges. The anodization on the metal is fantastic. It's perfectly smooth. And it just seems to be a very, very well built, solidly engineered focuser. Um, it is a 110 uh, micro focuser as well. Um, and as usual on most focuses, you will see a kind of locking mechanism at the back as well. So that's present on this. Um, height wise, it sits at about, I believe about 75 mils above your draw tube when fully extended. Oh, sorry, it's under normal conditions, it sits at about 75 mils. Uh, that can be reduced by removing the captain's wheel and that reduces it down by about 10 mils, I think. Um, the other standout feature to mention or to point out about the design of this, it's been designed for coma correctors. Um, that have the standard and kind of 55, 56 mil back focus. Um, now, speaking of coma correctors, the other nice little touch about this focus is, if I take the center locking adapter off, um, hopefully the camera will focus there, you can see there's some threads there. And what that is for is to allow you to directly connect your coma corrector to this focuser. Uh, so if you want even more rigid connection, uh, then that can be achieved. Obviously, I'll, I will be testing that out um, in later videos. So basically, um, if you like the video, you know, subscribe and hit that uh, little bell icon. That way, you'll be notified of my future videos. I will be doing a uh, a future video about installing this in the Quattro. So hopefully, some of you might also find that useful. And then I will do a third follow-up video about the general performance of this folder in terms of flex under load. Um, I have quite a heavy camera system. I've got a QSI 683 with the internal filter wheel, which weighs around about one half kilo. So it's got quite a weight on it. So that'll be a good test to really put this focuser through its paces. Now, um, price wise, um, this is around 330 euros. Uh, that's what I paid for it. I would like to also point out that this is not sponsored in any way, this video. Uh, I bought this for myself. And I bought this from Telescope Austria. Spoke to a really helpful guy there called Tommy. Um, so basically, uh, if you're interested in this focus, uh, head, maybe just head over there, tell them that, uh, that I sent you. Um, and yeah, it's uh, all I can say so far. Obviously, I know I haven't fitted this. Uh, I'm very, very impressed. So uh, I guess that's where we'll wrap up this video. And again, if you liked the uh, video and it was helpful, um, give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe and hit that notification icon. That will help me out quite a lot. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.